Téma dalšího panelu, nebo našeho prvního panelu je, kam směřujeme? To je, myslím, dobrá otázka na začátek konference. A tak mi dovolte, abych teď pozvala moderátorku prvního panelu na pódium, jejím, její Andrea Ferancová Bartoňová, předsedkyně představenstva společnosti Esperia Investments. Andrea. Dobrý den. Dobrý den. Já vám musím na Andreu něco prozradit. Ona tak jednou na procházce po Manhattanu si uvědomila, že Česká republika je malá a že by bylo dobré expandovat. Tak to udělala. Expandovala do 11 zemí a teď, s tím, teď, s tím vlastně chce, teď tím chce inspirovat a pomáhat s tím malým a středním firmám. Hosty panelu Andreje Francové budou Muňa El Ilali, CEO společnosti IKEA, Vera Van Donik, EMEA Talent Director Wunderman Thompson, Eva Pachocká, Central Europe HR Director Mars Czech Republic a Miroslava Simová, CEO společnosti Jan Becher Berno Rigar. So, thank you very much for a very nice introduction and good morning to everybody. So we will switch to English. <laughs> so uh, I say good morning, but I already feel like it's noon because I had quite long morning. I was running at uh, six o'clock, prepared the breakfast, managed to, to get the two children to the school, mm. uh, get ready for the conference, and I was running over here. So my husband was so nice, he dropped me over here. So I'm happy uh, to be here. And I am actually... Very, I feel very privileged that I can introduce you to these like, uh, wonderful ladies. <laughs> they, everyone is uh, different, but everyone has something interesting and important to say. So, um, I would like to firstly introduce you a lady that um, she's actually managing a household of uh, five children, two daughters and th three boys. Uh, and at the same time coping with an international job. She lives in Brussels, but is traveling to the Wunderman uh, headquarter uh, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, she believes in people and believes in the leadership from backwards. So Vera van Donning. Yes, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. So before I start with the next lady, I would like to actually read to you a mission statement of a one company. And I wonder how long it will take you to recognize what, is the, what, what company I'm talking about. Yeah? So, our vision is to create a better everyday life for many people by offering a wide range of well-designed, functional home furnishing products at prices so low that as many people as possible will be able to afford them. Yeah. Very good. So <laughs> I actually, myself, I found I find IKEA uh, mission statement amazing because I think if you read it to almost everyone in the world, they immediately know they, that it is yeah. IKEA. And we are very fortunate to have with us a CEO of IKEA, Munia El Ilali. And, um, but just to let you know, she actually started as a floor manager and she worked in, she's probably the most diverse person I ever met. She worked in many countries and she's surrounded even at home with the diversity. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Uh. I think you have said it all <laughs> with the statement of IKEA and I feel very proud when I hear it again uh. and again. So thank you very much. Oh. And uh, Dobry den. <laughs> I'm very happy to and feel honored uh, to be sitting in this room with so many brilliant women. So, looking forward. So, I'm happy uh, also uh, to introduce you another lady CEO and a big, supporter of, a big supporter of young women, Miroslava Simova. Uh, and um, I, uh, I believe she is, sh she is a role model not just for the young ladies in her company, Jan Becher Pernod Vicard. But I'm sure she, she is a role model also for all of us. Thank you very nice much. <laughs> very happy to be here. It's my uh, second year of Equal Pay Day, as I have been one and a half years in the Czech Republic. And I'm really excited to, to be with you today and tomorrow for the speed mentoring. Yeah. Thank you. And the last lady is actually not from 
Venus, she's from Mars, <laughs> Eva Pachotska, and I found out this morning that she actually is a cat lover. She has one son, one husband, seven cats, and one dog. <laughs> <laughs> And, but at the same time, she is a um, uh, member of the board of directors of Mars, the most diverse, or the board which is very diverse, but, and she's the one who actually built it. <laughs> so, welcome, all the ladies. Thanks a lot for the introduction. I've been living in Prague three years. Uh, that's my first time here. So I'm very happy, very, very excited. I'm happy to hear your stories and share also the stories from my company. Thanks for mm. the invitation. So I would like to start the, the panel about where we are heading in a corporate <coughs> culture in general. And then in the second part, we will look more on the corporate culture from a women, perspec women perspective. So Vera, I would like to ask you, according to you, the company culture is more than the yoga classes and well-being programs. So what is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So yeah, I think that happiness does not equal perks. I think like uh, really happy employers, they feel valued and they have a sense of purpose and they're really, mm -hmm. you know, happy to come every day to work uh, with nice colleagues and for nice bosses. So, um, and yes, of course, uh, our employees, they are a fan of free snacks and yoga classes, other well-being programs, but the really happy ones, they adore their bosses. They have like, uh, they feel empowered, they have a good life work balance and they have a clear view on um, career development opportunities. But of course that's quite a challenge um, to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So at Wunderman we try to build a culture uh, of honesty and transparency. And that is why we launched U-Time and U-Time is about having conversations around our people. So uh, we ask our managers to sit down on a regular basis with their direct reports. So instead of having formal performance reviews, they just talk about uh, work and life goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's also an opportunity for managers to acknowledge uh, accomplishments. But we want those talks to focus on four things, like how are you doing, what do you want to focus on on work, how can I as a manager help you, and what about your personal life, what, what do you want for yourself? And um, I think that built a culture where we put the, this employee you know, in, in the center and we achieved already some amazing career changes and, and yeah, I've heard amazing stories about that. So that's why we, how we try to build a, the culture of transparency and honesty. Okay, thank you. So, Munias, um, if I may uh, move it to you, so how uh, uh, IKEA, like uh, vision, is actually translated into corporate culture? Ah, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> um, you know, in IKEA, we like to um, we like to talk about uh, people, and um, when we talk about people, it's about sharing stories. And um, let me share my story uh, because I believe that. Uh, this is the way we show how we uh, behave in a company. Um, in IKEA, it's very important that uh, uh, the people life and uh, at work, but the people life at home. So it's important home. It's important place for us, not only for the customer, but as well for the coworker and for us. And that definitely, it's about uh, bringing the balance between the life at home and the work. And we're just one person. I'm a mother of three small child. Um, it's very crowded at home, and um, I have two four years and eight years old uh, small uh, children. And uh, here I am traveling, uh, doing my job. I love my job. I can uh, enjoy my kids at the same time. Um, in IKEA, we were able we are able to really focus on the career and at the same time uh, be a mother. And uh, it's absolutely unique, uh, not asking anyone to choose between being good at work and being a good parent. And I believe that in IKEA, we have the chance to really unleash people's talent and create the condition for it. 
And I think that's the main uh, important thing uh, we work on. In the culture, we, were, we, we talk a lot as well about being uh, uh, together and helping each other. Because of course, uh, it's nice to say that uh, having three kids in a career, but at the same time, it's not easy every day. But how are we helping each other in the company to really make things possible and to still be happy at home and at work? And uh, we build this togetherness culture, which comes very much from our Swedish culture, uh, but at the end of the day, I believe that uh, it's valid in Czech Republic as well, because it's a human culture. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So, Miroslava, important, for your, important topic for your corporate culture is sharing moments together. So what does it mean? <laughs> Uh, we are a truly international company, but with very strong French roots. So we have a name for this, uh, and it's called convivialité. It's a bit hard to translate, so convivialité is about sharing positive moments together, sharing a nice uh, social occasion around a meal, a good drink, and a conversation. So we uh, are trying to uh, translate the values we definitely have in common with all of our teams around the world with our consumers. So uh, we ask them to be convivialists, to share those social moments together in real life, uh, as opposed to, uh, I think, the latest tendency of being too much online, spending too little time in real life with people you love and you care about, with family and friends, around uh, a nice celebration meal and a good cocktail mm -hmm. and a good conversation, uh, sharing stories. So it is really about... Um, being, being yourself, being uh, real, and uh, uh, being more in real life as opposed to uh, the online world. Oh, thank you. So Eva, please tell us what you, what you are proud of in a company culture of Mars. <laughs> I would say uh, at Mars we are extremely proud of the culture itself. Uh, we say that the culture is differentiating us from the external world but it's also very much unifying and connecting us uh, internally. So no matter where you work, whether it's Czech Republic, Poland, or you know, United States and Australia, you can expect ex exactly, the same, ex exactly the same culture. You might ask what this culture stands for and what are the artifacts of the culture. So we are the privately owned business, one of the biggest in the world, and it's extremely important for us not only what we do as a business, but how we do it and what we, what we stand for. And we are guided and led by our values, by our five principles, which is quality, responsibility, mutuality, freedom, and efficiency. These are the guidance in our everyday life and these are the guidance of our decisions. Then the other artifact of the culture is the associate concept. We don't call ourselves employees, we call ourselves associates and we believe that that emphasizes the special bond and the special relationship we have with the company. So we can expect to be trusted, to be uh, responsible, to feel responsible, empowered and value, no matter what's the role in the organization and no matter what we, what we work for. For me personally, it means that the company is taking care of me, but I take care of the company, and I always treated the company like it's, uh, it's my own business. And the third, uh, the third caveat of our culture is uh, leadership. So we truly believe we are all leaders. No matter what's your career path, what's your role in the organization, you will lead. You have a chance to have an idea, have an initi initiative, Ch challenge status quo, talk to your friends, talk to your colleagues, challenge your boss sometimes even, and then uh, execute your ideas. That's something what we all value big time as well, because that gives us a sense of belonging, but also a sense of uh, making changes and implementing some, some new, uh, new solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, Munia, like, I would like to, like, IKEA is very much about the people, about the furniture. I would expect that you really put a lot of effort into developing the furniture, but what about innovation? Yeah, I was like, very much surprised that I have seen this, I don't know whether you have seen it, this application, new application of IKEA, you can scan your room at home and then you could fit their different like uh, furniture, uh, the different pieces of furniture or table, which, w which is quite like um, amazing, yeah, and it's changing the way of a shopping. So 
how did you manage to to develop that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, you, you name it very well because you start always by saying IKEA it's about the people, and I think it's. Uh, I'm happy to hear that because it's definitely about the people, and the, the the word innovation is a little bit sophisticated, and I would translate it very much about it's about really listening to the people needs, and uh, the customer. We are customer changing behavior. I mean. Who would have uh, been thinking that uh, one day we could uh, purchase shoes online? I mean, never. And today we purchase even shoes without trying it online and so on. So the behavior is changing. And of course, we would like to make sure that we are close to those behaviors and we answer to the customer needs. At the same time, for us, innovation is um, not only about digital. And I was a little bit with you on the digital part how we make convenient uh, the shopping at IKEA. It's very important. How we can make it easy for the people, because of course we are becoming more busy and busy, and we value the time. Because in IKEA we also value that we, people need time with the loved one. So how can we make things in an easy way to create a better everyday life in your home? The second thing in innovation, and I'm happy you're talking about that one, it's about the products and the sustainability, and I feel very proud to see that how many products today are developed with a sustainable approach, with recycled uh, components. I was, uh, I was in Sweden um, a couple of weeks ago and looking at the new range, and I was absolutely impressed where uh, I was standing in front of a carpet made 100% of plastic bottle. And I said, how can it's possible? You would touch the carpet, and it was, it's, it looks like a carpet. So um, it's this innovation part for me, it's connected to people, it's connected to the planet. Uh, it's, it's really much about that, mm -hmm. creating a positive impact uh, around us. Such. So um, uh, talking, talking about that, if we, if we move, uh, Vera, to your field, marketing. Yeah? So marketing is one of the area that is significantly changing. Yeah? The, the computers, artificial intelligence, it's just like a changing it. So much. So, so how does actually the fact that you're in the marketing is reflecting into the corporate culture in your company? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think technology mm -hmm. is like shaping, uh, is shaping marketing. And that is one of the reasons why we merge two major agencies at this moment. We merge Wunderman, which is a digital agency, with GWT, which is a traditional agency. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, Advertisers, they want inspiration now that is based on, on, on data insights and on data knowledge. And by merging these two agencies, we believe that we can offer that in just one agency. You have like amazing creativity, you have uh, data knowledge, and you have sophisticated technical skills. So I think just that, that you know, offering one team and one stop for advertisers is really important. And... Um, while artif artificial intelligence and automation are in the wise, and we're all looking at it, um, I need humanization. I think that humanization is like really important as well because we can stuff, we can put really irrelevant content into people's throat, but we don't want to do that. I think we need to use um, the knowledge that we have now of human behavior in fostering meaningful relationships with customers. So I think that that is really important. And um, yeah, so mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's what we try to do. And I think that's really, really important, looking at the human side of technology mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. So if we move more to the, to the corporate culture from a women perspective, so Eva, I need to ask you, how did you actually manage to achieve to have a board of directors there is seven women out of ten people in it. <laughs> in Ma How did you achieve it at Mars? <laughs> well, I just found them. They were already there. They were taking care of, uh, of, their, uh, of their career. So I was lucky enough having them, uh, having them around me. But uh, to be honest, it's a combination, in my opinion, of two factors. So that's the global corporate ambition and the inten intentionality, and then the local... I would say execution of the local focus. So globally at Mars, we truly believe in women in leadership. And Victoria Mars, our former board of directors, 
She is now the sponsor of the global program supporting uh, development of women at, at Mars. And actually, two years ago here in Prague, we were hosting a beautiful global event uh, when we were talking about what we already do great for women at Mars, what are the upcoming challenges, and what we also need to do uh, to be ready for uh, new challenges for uh, new generations and for these new, new, need, the, the new needs. Also, our uh, CEO, um, Grant Reed, uh, he signed for the CEO initiative for diversity and inclusion when the companies are working together to beating the bias, making a trainings about it, sharing best, best practices, but also practice the practices which does not work. So that's a global perspective. And then obviously locally, I truly believe in development. And I truly believe that career does not happen. The career is a everyday uh, focus and a conscious, uh, conscious decision. And that's what we do at Mars. We believe that we own our career. We can navigate and steer through this career the whole, the whole life making also decisions which are relevant to the different stages of the career. So, for example, myself, I'm a good example. Uh, when my son was younger, I haven't been mobile. So the company offered me the possibility to grow and develop in Poland. I was working on the different positions in the different, in the different uh, business units, and I had a chance to learn. But when my situation, my family situation allowed me, and I was mobile, that brilliant opportunity to be here arrived, I raised raise a hand, and then I said, I'm ready, I can come. The other part is that, uh, of course, we have a great supporting program, so we offer trainings, mentoring, we offer coaching, but we also encourage people at the very early stage of the career to explore, explore international assignments, explore diversity, explore cross functional cross-segment moves. You, you work in marketing, try sales. You are in sales, try your supply chain or finance that would only broaden your perspective and will help you in the future. Okay. But still, when I'm talking to CEO of the banks or CEO of the large companies, they all say, yeah, I would like to have a diversity, but I there's lack of, lack of women willing to be in those positions in Central Europe. So we are in the Central Europe, so I would like to get more of the recipe. Okay, there are people here or around us, but recipe how to really like, spot them and find them. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, I've been living in Prague three years, and I actually came here in 2016 to help the business establish a new cluster of the four, uh, uh, four countries with the headquarter in, in Prague. And that uh, cluster is uh, currently led by 10, uh, 10 leadership team members, and seven of us are women. That's true, but we are also seven of us, uh, 10 of us, 10 different nationalities. So when we started building the cluster, we said diversity is our ambition, and, and that's what we want to build. So from the very beginning, we said we want to have the most diverse hub the hub and the organization which will be the role model because we truly believe that diversity is something that is helping us to do the better business and be more, more inspira inspirational about the leader, as a leaders. So we started uh, building that, uh, that diverse organization and it's much beyond the, the gender diversity. It's about career ambition, it's about uh, uh, passport, it's about uh, uh, different experience, different age. Um, I see. And that, uh, and that okay. happens when you are intentional and you, you have tools and you have people around you, uh, the things are happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, Miroslava, you, you are a big supporter of a young, young women. And um, for young women, the flexibility of work is very important. So how are you handling uh, this in your company? I would like to echo a little bit the comment from Eva that indeed in order for a balanced um, uh, management and also um, employment uh, force uh, to happen, you need the company to support strategically this effort. This is very clear. But I also think that each one of us has a role to play. So we can do our own little thing in our own little corner, in my case, here in the Czech Republic, depending on the pressures and on the needs. Uh, being Bulgarian and having worked many years in Scandinavia, uh, I was not really aware of the glass ceiling for a long time. Mm. I was never thinking about balance and gender diversity for, for my 
I'd say, early years in my career because I kind of ignored the existence of it. But when I came here in the Czech Republic, I realized that there is a lot more pressure on women, and especially on younger women, who are in the natural stage of having children, uh, some of them having uh, one, two, three, one after the other. And there was a real pressure from various stakeholders, starting with the family, with peer friends, and even, I would say, the state, the government, is not really helping mm -hmm. that, uh, that women have the pressure to come, uh, to come, not to come back to work. They are somehow seen as bad mothers if they do. And uh, I think this is really uh, something we need to fight. And how do you fight it? By helping them. So what we have done in Jan Beher Panori Car, uh, we are really creating uh, a good environment to allow this flexibility in a different, in a difficult stage, a transitional stage, I would say, in every woman's life. And by the way, it's not only uh, given to women. We have two men also who use those flexibility measures coming back from paternity leave. So it's not necessarily gender uh, driven only, but uh, very naturally, it's, uh, it's mostly uh, related to women who would like to come back to the workforce after uh, maternity. And so what we have done is we are creating the uh, possibility for women to kind of sample the work life. So they can choose to work three days a week, to work 80%, uh, to work two days from home, three days from the office, all sorts of combination. And to be honest, this is not something we just do for the women. Obviously, we help them. This is really, really important. But this is really a business decision. I feel that in the Czech market, where there is almost no unemployment, in Prague, there is definitely no unemployment, do you have a choice not to retain your talent? I don't think so. I think you need to do something to retain your talent instead of going to the spiral of just hiring and rehiring new people mm -hmm. and then taking time to introduce them to the work uh, obviously, they're not fully uh, capable to, to take the job in the beginning, so it's much better to support your, uh, your confident, knowledgeable, experienced, talented staff and uh, to make them navigate in their life and career uh, cycles. And um, mutual support of women at workplace, does it work? Does it exist? Of does course it, it does, yes. Um, uh, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, women supporting each other and showing example in a very simple way, just by telling our stories, by sharing our very diverse career paths. Um, and uh, only recently, actually it happened last week, I'm very happy to share a little story. I was very passionate about uh, balance and uh, uh, leadership being more balanced in the company. And our company, Jan Becher Panoricar and Panoricar Worldwide, uh, he's historically a bit more French and very male. So um, in the last three years, we have moved our uh, top tier. We're 18,000 people in the world, so the top 500 uh, managers. Uh, the female participation has moved from 20 to 26 percent. Now, it doesn't seem like maybe a lot. It's not completely balanced, but it's a big move. And one of the reasons is definitely it's part of the strategy. So the company is supporting that mm -hmm. move. And the company today is more men in management. So men support that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, in October, we had our top management seminar. And I suddenly realized there were really much more women in the audience. So I started literally counting. And I realized that in our own CEO circle, we moved from 5, 6 to 15. So it tripled the CEO women in, uh, in the group. So what I did was uh, create a little uh, informal group of ourselves trying to really help younger women progress in the career, support them through mentoring, through uh, various initiatives. And we met last year in a workshop in Paris and uh, tried to figure out how we can uh, best support and how we can accelerate already existing processes in the company of better inclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vera. Uh, you, your company launched in 2017 Pass It On program, and you discovered that uh, that often uh, the women are their own like a barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 what did you discover, and what we are sh what we are supposed to do about that? Yeah, <laughs> I think it goes a bit with Miss Lewis. Um, uh, what she's telling. So um, 
as in many industries, we had a lack of women in, in, in leadership. And in, by investigating the issue, um, our global chief talent officer at that time, Judy Jackson, she discovered that, well, often we are our own barriers. And, um, you know, men tend to ask what they want, while women, they tend to, to wait for being asked. And that is just one thing. Of course, you have external, practical barriers, but there are quite a lot that are internal as well, like a lack of self-confidence. And also, a lot of us, I guess, I'm, if I, can, I, I think so, a lot of us have like these little voices in our head, like nagging all the time, are you good enough? You know, well, you're, not, not, you're not ready. There are much better people around you to do this. So, um, we really acknowledged that we, need, we needed to empower women to empower themselves. We started working with an external company and we, we launched Pass It On. And it's mainly about uh, empowering women to focus on their career and focus on what do they want to achieve uh, in their careers at Wonderman and how can we help them, how can we give them tools to achieve that and have a clear focus. Um, so, yes, in 2017, we uh, started with global workshops, inviting women all over the world. And, uh, yeah, we do, we empower them individually and we also give them tools so that they are able to support women in their local offices as well. And, yeah, we saw some amazing things happening. For instance, like Mel Edwards, she was at the time EMEA CEO of Wonderman. And I remember we needed to say at the end of the workshop, we needed to say, you know, what is going to be your bold move? What is your next big thing? What do you really want to achieve? And Mel, without a doubt, she said, I'm going to be the next global CEO. And the global CEO at that time, he was, it was a man, and he was, you know, just as a visitor at the workshop. And she said it just without a doubt. And if you see now, two years later, she is global CEO of Wunderman Thompson, a two, 20,000 people large company. So I think, yeah, that is really amazing. But, you know, she's just one example. We have other ones too. A couple of the women left the, the agency because that was their career progression. They just mm. wanted something different. And hey, if you want to open a beach club in California, we can't help you. So that's mm. just it. Uh, so, yeah, we learned a lot of doing that, and, uh, but I think that the best thing that came out of it is like the, the community feeling of those women. Because to be honest, when it comes down to programs for women only and events for women only, I'm always a bit sceptical, you know, that's totally not me. I'm not like into the difference between men and women. But working on it and being part of it, I saw amazing things happen. I think like women are capable of, of actually supporting each other and building that community and giving women access to a global network. It opened a lot of opportunities. The people in Prague did an amazing job. They had like several events etern internally. They had put on mentoring, pro uh, mentoring programs. They have special programs for women on maternity leave. So yeah, some amazing things, but also definitely some learnings. I'm talking about that um, during the mentoring um, tomorrow. Um, yeah, so now we go, we're going into the next step and it will be a challenge because yeah, now we have to do this for two uh, agencies with different cultures. So I'm quite cur curious how that will go. Oh. Okay, thank That's you. It. So, Munia, the kids' corner in IKEA are great, yeah? But <laughs> you already touched on that subject, but do, uh, do you see in your company your employees also as the parents? I guess you do, as you mentioned, but tell us like a concrete things. What you, can they leave the children in the kids' corner to play when they're at work, or <laughs> what do you...? <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, uh, we... Uh, Ingvar, the founder of IKEA, um, always used to be, and I, it resonates so much in, in, in my heart, uh, that uh, the kids are the most uh, important uh, person in the world. And um, of course, they are the, um, the future, and uh, we need to take care of them, uh, not only as a parents, but as well on, uh, in the environment uh, around us. 
uh, in the office, it's funny, when I arrived, it was like uh, kids around, even dogs around, and then I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, that was kind of, uh, but I like it because it's, uh, it's about the real life. So uh, we definitely uh, see the, we don't see the person as a person only at work. There is no uh, barrier between the work and the life, and uh, we're just one. And we do integrate this uh, family part uh, in, in IKEA. And then, you know, while, while I was uh, listening to you, I, I, um, we, we do like uh, uh, inclusion. And inclusion, it's about looking at the people on who they are. Not uh, you are a talent manager or you are a logistic manager. No, you are, you are a person first. And then it's important to understand who you are. So I, I, I'm very inspired, and I can share with Proud that uh, this gender um, uh, topic that is very now um, in the mouth a bit of everybody, and I'm happy that we are focusing on that one. For me, it's really much about the equity and the, the balance. And, um, and I'm proud to say that we're almost 50-50 in IKEA. And um, so it's as important, the mix, than just the category. And then uh, an important ingredient here as well I, 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 um, I really like to share is about uh, um, the inclusion is about uh, removing this uh, diploma, this uh, uh, high school level title, this, and I, I love it very much. And um, if we talk about the value, it's a very important value I, I, I feel I want to give to my kids. Um, it's about your talent, it's about who you are, um, and it's not about the school you're into or the diploma you have. And, and for me, this is so important because this is where discrimination starts. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy that you're talking about the kids because um, for us it's an important part of uh, everything we do. Uh, if you have followed a little bit the campaign we have done with these uh, toys, where the kids uh, all over the world were allowed to uh, design a toy. And, um, and then it's, uh, it was selected, uh, the, the winners uh, across the world. Mm -hmm. And this little um, uh, child uh, actually had the chance to uh, uh, meet, uh, enter in the company, meet people, but, that, but definitely had the chance to see the toys in the store. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the, I, for me, this is something very beautiful because it's, it goes beyond uh, the business, it goes beyond, and it gives such a strong purpose. Why are we doing the things every day? Okay, that's nice. So there is like, I think nowadays, um, a uh, lot of like uh, opportunities and uh, you know like uh, we can progress with the career but i think like um, uh, we sometimes sometimes it is like uh, quite difficult for women to to do so when i was uh, studying at harvard one professor gave me actually a book which was called never good enough and uh, actually the the title of the book is longer is just how to use the perfectionism to your advantage without letting ruin it to ruin it your life so and there are these moments yeah so like the last time i had this moment when my son came from school and he he told me mommy you forgot again <laughs> to order us a strawberry dumplings for lunch so and in my head blinked this dining room at school and uh, you know like all of the children eating like a strawberry dumplings except of my sons who actually had the default lunch number one <laughs> which you need to change which I forget which I for forgot for the third time this year and I felt really really miserable because yes I can expand to 11 countries but I'm not capable to remember that I need to order this lunch yeah so and and you feel I, f I felt really really bad and hopeless so so like uh, Munia I start with you uh, you so how are you coping with this fight to to satisfy everybody mm. <laughs> wow actually I think I don't <laughs> <laughs> I try very hard <laughs> I um as a, as a person, as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, and as a leader, I struggle to uh, not feel guilty every day because I want to give the 100% to everybody. And of course, if you do the calculation, it doesn't work. And, uh, but um, I, I think that it's a journey 
and when you feel uh, the trust in your environment, when you feel that at home you have the trust, at work you have the trust, that uh, you feel safe, then it's okay to make mistakes. And it's okay not to be 100% Wonder Woman. Because I understood that being Wonder Woman, it's impossible. And uh, that was my first haha moment in life, because I thought I could be Wonder Woman, but it's not possible. You know this hero thing? No, it's not possible. But it's possible to definitely feel good by being yourself, feel good that sometimes it's a little bit more here and less here, and sometimes it's the other way around. And I think uh, when you definitely feel the safety environment around you, it's just okay to be yourself. And um, something I really found very weird when I entered in IKEA, because I come from sports business before, French retailer, and this was like, okay, this is weird, but with the time I appreciate it a lot. It's we are super allowed and encouraged to make mistakes. Actually, we celebrate mistakes. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? And I love it because then it's fine to not be perfect. Because if you try to be perfect, I felt that it's a struggle. Then you need to be extremely organized, of course, because if I have three kids at home and uh, um, <coughs> intensive uh, work agenda, uh, you really need to be organized. But I must say that um, uh, I, find the, I find the joy in it. I try to find the balance in it, and I feel definitely supported by our culture to be able to do it. Every time I visit units, stores, and I'm very happy to see uh, my IKEA friends uh, in the corner, I feel very supported by many, many coworkers. How are you? How you feel? Isn't it too much traveling? How can we support you? This is amazing, you know? Sometimes I arrive in the morning and I find uh, my ginger water, hot water with lemon on my desk, and it's like, let's share a tea together, let's care for each other. And this caring culture is very important. And if we can do something around us, is really to care for each other. Is to ask a simple question. Ask yourself how many times you look around and ask, how are you? But the real, how are you today? And take the time to listen. Because maybe behind this smiley person, there is a struggle. Maybe this behind this joy, I'm fine. There is someone who is struggling with his life, is struggling with the balance between the work and the life, and just sometimes by talking and listening to each other, it helps a lot. I strongly believe that it's about really, really making small things that make big impact in people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. <laughs> um, Miroslava, like, um, would you would you have a story f uh, uh, to share with us about like uh, in this not I don't feel good enough like uh, not good enough <laughs> yeah the perfection yeah well I guess age helps a little bit so with age you kind of accept who you are and you accept your imperfections and you frankly don't care about them anymore. Um, but uh, I think we can really learn from men in their approach. They're very different in their approach to, to everything in life, including jobs, including uh, career, including leadership, uh, including uh, trying something new. And the aha moment for me came when um, five years ago I was about to start my first CEO role and uh, I had the opportunity to be in our yearly conference with all my fellow CEOs, which, as I said, were mostly men, very few women. So I just took the time to talk to each one of them separately and say, so what are your tips? What are your advice? What would you normally do when you start a new job, a new CEO, because they're moving around the world in a new team? So give me some wisdom. And a learning already was the fact that each one of them gave me a different lesson. So that's already, I think, a great learning that there is no one single way 
You have to find your own that works for you. But there was one particular advice I really uh, kept and I sometimes uh, share with other women especially. It was from um, a very senior uh, leader in our organization, uh, perhaps the complete opposite of me, uh, big Anglo-Saxon guy, a very different approach in terms of how he looks and how he acts. Now I'm a bit more kind of softer, empathic, and he will be more direct. And he said, Mira, forget about your weaknesses. Nobody hired you for them. Just, you know, don't care about them. You have the job because of all the strengths and value you're bringing to the company. So, sounds so simple, but it's so true. We sometimes tend to focus on the little imperfections, like uh, the classic example how a man and a woman take a new job uh, assignment, whether they could take it. And it says, okay, so I'm yes, 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 no, no, yes, yes, no. Oh, 60%, says the guy. Mm -hmm. Perfect, I'm going for it. And then the woman looks at the same job description saying, yes, 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 no, mm, 80%, oh, I'm not so sure. Can I do mm -hmm. it? You know, so uh, I think this is my story. This is a simple lesson that I took and really try to live, uh, live through. And now uh, I spoke about conviviality, and conviviality is a lot about enjoyment. I like what you say in IKEA, and I believe you really do it this way, that there is no work-life balance. You're one, and your people are, you know, they're people. So the time they spend at work, and the time they spend at home, sometimes the kid is sick and they bring, it, bring the kid to the office, or sometimes you need to take an emergency home office. Mm. That's still the same mm. one person. So mm. to me, there must not be a, a separation. And uh, what is really important is that you enjoy all your roles, because we as mothers, we have a bit more, perhaps, on our plate. And who cares if you're perfect? Because your child doesn't remember the imperfections. They remember your presence, your love. So uh, two weeks ago, uh, we were in Spindler of Mlin discussing budgets for the region, you know, millions of uh, profit, and how are you achieving the growth and digitalization. <clears throat> and in every break, uh, the men would just take a coffee and a drink and maybe a cigarette and go out. And I would be checking because my daughter was planning a birthday. And it was like, okay, mail from the Lezetsky Centrum, aha, uh -huh, okay. So I need to choose the pizza. And then uh, mail from the Tsukrarna, uh, which unicorn design have you chosen for your cake? Aha, uh -huh, fine. So, you know, we have these multiple roles, but I think the trick is to truly enjoy them, mm -hmm. to enjoy your little uh, birthday preparation, to enjoy your leadership role, to enjoy your team role, being part of a team, uh, and, and support each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that would be my example, perhaps. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing this. Uh, Eva, you as a HR uh, director come across, you, you're dealing daily with the people, so I'm sure you have a lot of stories like this with your people that they didn't feel like good enough for some things. <laughs> so would you, would you remember any of these? <laughs> Well, there are probably plenty of them. I can share uh, one of my very first experiences ma at Mars. I had my very first, uh, very first boss, and he used to say, Eva, remember, 80% today is better than 100 tomorrow. So that was probably my very first uh, lesson when I also realized that perfection is, is, uh, is not necessary, and sometimes this 80% is okay, because that's exactly what is, uh, what is required. Uh, in terms of the, I'm not good enough, uh, or uh, do I miss 10%, uh, 20 or 30 I would say be honest with yourself and have your own clarity what you want to achieve, what's your career ambition, and also be aware of uh, what's the stage of your life, because that's changing, and we as a woman, we have a different priorities over the time. There is a moment then learning is important, there is a moment family is important, then there is a moment uh, we are more free, kids are grown up, we want to invest in the career. Be aware of it and make the choices according to what's important for you in a certain period of time. Then probably you will feel that you are picking your big battles or we are picking our big battles, we invest what, what matters. And then it's, um, 
and then it's much easier. You, you, don't, uh, you don't feel that you miss, miss something. Because these life, this life stories are changing. And then even if we are focused on the family right now or on the career, it will change, something else will come, but we will feel very connected with ourselves and very truly dedicated to what's important uh, over the time. And then I would say at the end, don't uh, undermine the technology. It is making our life uh, much easier. Uh, it is helping with flexibility. It is helping with uh, working from home, having a flexible, flexible time. And at the end, I would say, find a company who offers you that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we shouldn't forget the technology. It can make our life much easier. Mm. Um, uh, Vera, in your company, you follow a lot of like uh, research, so uh, connected with your project. But I think in general. So, so what you would advise us on the back of this research, like uh, what we are supposed to do when we, when we feel even, or, or feel a little bit of a fear, because what are the, f either at work or in our life? Mm -hmm. I think you refer to the, to the, the things we've been discussed on the fear letter. That's, that's, that's an exercise we did during a pass it on session, and it is about, um, recognizing or, or be aware of the fears that you have. And, and these fears are often like uh, unrealistic. Um, yeah, for, for example, like just coming to this conference. For, for me, this is the first time, uh, yeah, second time in Prague, never been to this conference. I don't understand a word check. Uh, I'm not used to, sit, you know, putting the stage, I'm more like, working from behind the scenes and stuff like that. So when people, when, when my Prague colleagues ask me to do this, I was like, mm, my God, am I the right person to do this? And probably much better people to do this and blah, blah, blah. And what if I, uh, you know, if I will disappoint them? And uh, what if I, you know, um, you know, be a bad image for Wunderman and I will get fired and blah, blah, blah. So by sitting here, I will get fired. Now, this is the kind of thinking we often have. And yeah, you, by doing this exercise, you are aware that, you know, it's crazy. Just let go and, and don't, you know, let, let these fears put you behind. Just like go for it and yeah, take the risk. And that's something that I definitely had to learn. And I think uh, maybe the best lessons I got were, was from man managing my family of five children, so I have three stepchildren and two biological children. And the mixture of that is like really interesting, <laughs> challenging, <laughs> especially. So, you know, you, you, and this might sound harsh. Uh, you don't choose your stepchildren, they just come with the husband. <laughs> and you can't fire them and they don't behave. And so I was like this real control freak, you know, I was going to manage everything and I had organized everything. I was a real project manager. But then these kids, they start, you know, growing up and becoming adults and you have to change your relationship with, with those people change. Mm -hmm. um, and becoming more adult and you have different conversations and they expect it. They have boyfriends and girlfriends and then suddenly, you know, you have to let go. It's out of control. <laughs> and, uh, but it's so interesting to see these different personalities, these different point of views, and it makes you so much stronger dealing with that and all these different stakeholders. You have moms and dads and, and you know, it's quite complicated, but I think it, it made me a better manager, especially by letting it go. And yes, you have fears, and yes, you have doubts of, you know, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm not doing this very well. But yeah, that's just the way it is. Um, and I totally support what you're saying, like, uh, don't focus on your weakness, but focus on your strengths and, and be your authentic self. Don't try to be someone else. Be authentic, uh, I think that is, yeah, that's quite important. Yeah, that's, it. that's interesting you're saying that, but I have to... Yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
I have to say we had like a all cause to get uh, together and I think one of the things which is like when you fear something you should really like work on it and prepare and know it because and Vera actually like we had the call but she really was preparing like uh, for the panel very much. <laughs> she sent me control like freak. a... Control <laughs> freak. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't say control freak. I would say... I would say that she really wanted that uh, we will deliver to you something that is interesting for you and she really cared and we had like a few discussions and emails over that so I wanted to say that she put a lot of effort. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just used yeah. of like, I don't, I don't want to... I've been to conferences where they invite people from companies and they make this big publicity about themselves and I just, I just need to make sure that we have a relevant story for all of us. That just, Mm. Yeah, which is which is important. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So I would I would say so you have uh, an opportunity to ask questions in case you would like to <coughs> know something. I just like to say I think it's fantastic that we have some children in the audience. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Because okay, they're noisy, but that's real life. It's fantastic. I love it. I think we we owe a, a flower to this little girl in a red dress <laughs> somewhere behind. I have an IKEA children's corner over <laughs> here. Yeah, yes. So, uh, yeah, there is someone in the back. So I don't know whether we will you will get a microphone. There's a question over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for great sharing, ladies. It was just a great inspiration and authenticity which we could hear from you. Uh, you mentioned all of you in some way that feeling of being not enough is one of the barriers for the happy life and, and the and the grow and successful career. So do you have any simple advice? what help you to overcome this feeling in your, in your life, which you would share with uh, us here to help other women? So, like I just say for myself, I read that book. <laughs> Never good enough, yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand it well. Enough. So that I read the book, yeah, which I was advised to read uh, about. It's called Never Good Enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I think it's a very good one. <laughs> um, if I can share in a very simple uh, way, um, I, I truly believe uh, that, um, and probably this belief helps me a lot, that uh, all human beings are equal. I don't believe that there is a super, superior uh, human race. It's, uh, I believe in, in that we all born equal and uh, we need to treat uh, people as equal. Fairness is very important to me. So I always believe that if I feel around me, someone look at me like not enough or uh, lower, then he, should, he or she should reflect on, her, on he or her human values. And uh, standing, I feel strong for that. I always believe that uh, when I get very nervous or impressed with a conference room or a meeting or a presentation where I don't always feel very comfortable, I think, you know what? We are just men and women. We are the same. We uh, have the same needs. We wake up in the morning. We don't look very good on the mirror, and then we go for the coffee, and we have absolutely the same needs. We're the same. We are just having different responsibilities, different scope. Uh, that's it. So I remove a bit this title thing, and I, I feel like, you know what? I, we are exactly the same, on the same level. So why should I feel not enough? And this... I believe help a lot. Um, I believe as well, and uh, probably that's a small tip I would give. Uh, we always believe that uh, women, we are more emotional, right? And then we like to cry and all these kind of things. And uh, then, then showing emotion is something that make you feel uh, weak. And I always say to the people around me that showing emotion is the strength you have. Being connected from your emotional intelligence is the biggest asset you have. Being empathic 
is the biggest asset you have. So I would recommend that talk to your heart, be yourself, don't be ashamed to cry, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> If I may just add one small tip about the same question. So how do you overcome the never good enough? I think everybody has different ways. It's good to listen to advice, but also you need to find your own way. But I would say some things that generally have helped me and people around me is probably a combination of preparing well, so work hard and prepare well, but then don't overdo it, just go to sleep. Get some sleep, basically. Mm -hmm and really try to enjoy it. When you go to, you know, to your aha moment, to your uh, stage moment, or to your, to your presentation moment, or to your, I don't know, budget exercise, uh, just try to enjoy it, really. So that's my recipe. And remind, it's okay to make mistakes. Yes. <laughs> and I would say what was helping me, if I reflect on my uh, career, of course, I had that feeling, am I good enough uh, for that challenge, for that mission, for that big occasion? But I was always, uh, I was always uh, about making a first step. So I said, OK, I try. And I will, I will make the first step, even it, if it was the small one. And then after that small step, something opened. Uh, someone uh, told me perspective uh, change, and then I made uh, another step and the, uh, and the another one. So th that's a bit of uh, my kind of a best practice, which I would like to share with, share with you. And at the same time, uh, let's look at ourselves with the history which we are already bringing uh, to the table. So uh, don't undermine who you are right now, all what you already achieved and all what you experience. That's like a beautiful life uh, backpack. You have uh, all your life with you. And when it's needed, look into it. And you find a lot of uh, resources there, which are helping you with the small steps every day. Yeah. OK, well, <laughs> you don't, I you agree with it. everything. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, um, well, I try to look at behavior rather than what people say, that's my life motto as well. You know, I, I, I look at how people behave. Um, I saw a lot of people around me are really great in communication and boasting around what they've achieved or what they're going to achieve. But I think it's really important to look at people and also especially look at the silent ones. Um, I think being open and honest and fair is, is, is really important and by behaving that way uh, people will copy it. Um, there's a big difference in what people say and what they actually do. Uh, I have quite a lot of people around me who say that they are real team players, they uh, foster collaboration, but when you send them an email, they don't even have the decency to reply on that email. If I look at Mel uh, Edwards, our global CEO, when you send her an email, you have a reply within 24 hours and she is leading a company with 20,000 people. So I think that says a lot and also the, the setting that example. Um, of course, I don't email her about the weather in Brussels, but yeah, it, it's, it's, I think uh, you need to behave like you or treat people the way that you, you want to be treat. threatened, treat, treated, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, that's a bit my uh, advice and my life motto. Look at how people behave, not always listen to what they say. So maybe we have... One more question. Time for one more question. Yes. Please wait for here. If if you have a microphone over here, is there? I think it's better. Just wait. Like you just wait. Maybe so it's better to. It's probably better to I was in the line. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, just simple question. What do you do, uh, or how do you manage to have really your own time for yourself? Probably a question to. Vera, mm -hmm. with five children. Who's asking the question? Jana, <laughs> me, here. <laughs> Over there. Okay, oh yeah, okay, okay. okay there. Yeah. <laughs> I always like to see it. Um, well, it comes natural, like, I guess. It, it's, it, yeah, you just have to make sure. Um, of course, when the people, but when my children were smaller, it's, it's harder, but uh, I think you always need to find time. And in the beginning, it was m mainly about project management, actually having it all organized. And now I 
I'm just going with the flow, but make sure to dedicate time, just really actually make sure. Um, yeah, uh, block some time in your agenda. Um, and um, yeah, al but also what you like doing, you should be able to combine that in your work. Uh, you should be able to love what you do during the day, either it's work or professional. I know that's easy to say, but um, by talking to people, for instance, like when you really like, when you want to do sports, uh, well, try to organize it within your work. Uh, we have groups who go jogging during lunchtime and stuff like that. So, yeah, it just, you have to take care of it yourself and, and just make sure it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last question, because we are getting short, go ahead. <laughs> I'm in an age that all my grandparents are asking me, like, what about the grandchildren? And my biggest fear is I'm running a company, I'm in a good position, and my question is, uh, when did you finish your maternity leave? Because here in Czech Republic we have three years, and I'm worried about, like, if everything will wait for me three years, how to manage it? When it's a good time for you, maybe you just give me some example how to do it. Can I maybe take this one? Because I'm very passionate about this subject. Uh, maybe I'll stand up because I don't see you. So, um, I think that in the Czech Republic you actually have very generous conditions for a maternity leave. And the more generous they are because they're flexible. So you say it's three years, but actually you can choose. You really have the right. You can choose one year or two years or three, and you get the same money, which in some countries you don't. So the same amount of money you can get it for as long as you choose to have, which I think is very precious. Um, at the same time, again, it's very individual. I took one year of maternity leave. I'm, I'm not sure how you ladies uh, did it. But most importantly, you need to to decide how much you want to come back to work. And I know of people who are more entrepreneurial, not so much in a corporation, but doing their own business. So in the Czech Republic, who would take maybe six months completely, like complete cut off, and then work a little bit in the second six months just to keep the things going with the support of uh, uh, partners and um, associates. And then perhaps in the second year come 60%, and then in the third year perhaps come full time, but it's really an individual choice, which I think you, you are really lucky to have the flexibility to choose. But as I said, I feel uh, we collectively need to help governmental stakeholders, families, so government, they need to make uh, available childcare, right? Without childcare, it's quite hard to take this decision. Uh, and us as colleagues, friends, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, husbands, we, need, we have a role to play to support women to make this decision according to their needs. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice. If I may, yeah. I, just, if I, may I uh, um, because I, I, I read a little bit something else in your question than the fear not too much about the timing of the maternity leave, but what happened then when I come back, if I'm still um, on the, let's say, spot, uh, to do something, if people will uh, remember me, if I would not be forgotten or something like this. So if I may read a little bit what you're asking for. So if I could give you a recommendation, then take the dialogue, ask the question, be open about it, because if it's a fear, you have a concern, then just talk about it in a very open way, because it's, it's important for you, and it might be important for the company to hear that you're concerned, that you go on maternity leave, but still, when you're back, you still consider the fact that you want to move on and you want to do something differently. That that's, uh, probably might uh, help you as well and help them to keep you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So thank you. So we have to like uh, finish because we are short on time, but I'm sure you take a lot of things from the panel, but I would just like to say a few points which are like uh, resonated with me. So there is no work-life balance. So you need to do at work what you like and what you love. Recognize, be authentic, recognize your fears, accept who you are, focus on your strengths and not on uh, weaknesses. And this is actually valid not just for us, but also for the company's corporate cultures.
So thank you very much to Munia, Vera, Eva, and Biroslava. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure.